I hope you don't feel like I'm repeating myself a bajillion for million times today. I'm kind of feeling like I'm repeating myself a bajillion for million times today. But don't forget, secondary active transport requires energy and it requires a carrier and it moves molecules against the concentration gradient and it requires energy to do this. And if you had to take a wild guess, if I said true or false, right now, you're going to bet whatever dessert you're having tonight, you're betting that. Put it on the table. If you get this right, you get the dessert. If you get it wrong, I get the dessert. Here's the true false question. Is this true or false? Secondary active transport needs energy in the form of ATP. True or false? What are you going to say? All right, I just have to say some words here about this. I just posed a question to you that I, you don't know the answer to. You don't know if, you don't know what the energy source is. You know we need energy, but you don't know what the energy source is. And I just said, is it ATP? And if you had to guess right now, I'm going to say, you should say, no, it's not ATP. That would be a good guess. Because if it was ATP, how's it different from primary active transport? That's the logic. I just walked you through a logic thing that you can do on a test. If you are faced with something that you're like, what? I've never heard this before in my life. You could actually figure it out sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes you can. It's true. Secondary active transport doesn't use ATP. Are you ready to go with me on this? Instead, it uses a concentration gradient of another molecule. Okay, what? Are you serious? It's like hitching a ride. One molecule, when you have secondary active transport, one molecule moves down its concentration gradient and the carrier uses the energy from that molecule moving down its concentration gradient. It captures the energy in that movement and uses that energy to pump something else against its concentration gradient. The rule of thumb is if you don't see ATP involved, there probably is some molecule going down its concentration gradient. And that's how that's where the energy is coming from for this secondary active transport. You can think of it like one molecule is catching a ride with another molecule that's going down its concentration gradient. You just you just hitch a ride. You're already going that way. I don't have to pay for the gas because you already have it, right? So ultimately, if I were to ask the question, does secondary active transport rely on ATP? I say this from experience. I have asked that question and I have expected the answer to be no, it does not. And then I get baffled when students complain about they thought it did. And if they thought it did, because somewhere you had to have ATP to establish somebody else's concentration gradient that they came down. Did you follow that crazy line? In secondary active transport, someone has a concentration gradient that they travel down. But how did we get that concentration gradient? Somewhere, a primary active transporter used ATP to create that concentration gradient. Secondary active transporters, I can't 
think of a secondary active transporter that exists on its own. It has to be coupled with a primary active transporter in order to establish that concentration gradient in the first place. How do you feel about this? Remember, we're just dealing with carriers. We don't have active transport through channels. We don't have active transport directly through the cell membrane, but we do have carrier proteins that do the, do the job. One more way that we can move um, trickier molecules through the cell membrane, and that's um, vesicular transport, which we're gonna talk about in a second. 